section, we're going to talk about anthropology. We're going to talk about the fields of anthropology. We're going to talk about some guiding principles of anthropology. The definition in this class of anthropology is that it's the study of human species and its immediate ancestors. You'll find anthropologists study just about everything that humans do. When we look at the fields of anthropology, there are four fields and we will explore those things now. The first field is physical anthropology and physical anthropology is the physical, is the study of human biological variation in time and space. There are several areas that are a part of physical anthropology. The first being paleontology, or sometimes called paleoanthropology, which investigates human biological variation and how we have evolved anatomically. There's also primatology, which is the study of humans nearest living relatives, the primate. And we study their anatomy, their social behavior, and we study their adaptation. There's also the look at human variation, human variation, and that's how and why human populations vary physically. And then finally, there's forensic anthropology. We'll discuss that a little bit more, but basically forensic anthropologists work with law enforcement, government agencies, and other entities to analyze and identify human skeletal remains. How many of you are familiar with the television show Bones? And did you know that it was actually based on the work of a forensic anthropologist? Meet Dr. Kathy Rikes. She's a forensic anthropologist who works with police, the courts, with medical examiners, and many other organizations in cases of crimes, in cases of disasters and genocide. Her work inspired the television show Bones. And forensic anthropologists have been called in for many different things after many disasters such as hurricanes and times of war and others to identify the human remains and to help bring about a sense of dignity and a sense of resolution in those situations. The next field of anthropology is archaeology. And archaeology is the study of human behavior through material remains. And there are several aspects of archaeology as well. Within archaeology, there are also several subfields of archaeology, the first being prehistoric archaeology that investigates the cultures that have never kept written records. The second is historic archaeology, which supplements written materials by the excavation of homes, stores, plantations, factories, and other historic structures. We also talk about in archaeology cultural resource management, which locates the sites of prehistoric and of prehistoric and historic significance. It evaluates their importance and it makes recommendations about total or partial preservation of those sites and those places. And then finally, there's contract archaeology, and that's where firms bid competitively for the privilege of locating, excavating, and reporting on sites that are affected or destroyed by construction. When there's an excavation about to take place or that has happened, often archaeologists are brought onto the site to make some determination about what needs to be done next. A good example of physical anthropology or archaeology as well as contract archaeology is the case of the African Burial Ground Project. In 1991, Dr. Michael Blakey, who's pictured here, was called in after some construction workers in Manhattan had discovered some human remains. And the ultimate determination is that it was a 
burial ground that dated back to the 17th century and it contained the remains of over 10,000 enslaved Africans who had been used to build in Manhattan. And after the investigation, Dr. Blakey and others as a part of the project made sure that the bodies were properly interred and the proper memorial and the note of their contribution and all was made as a result of that. Linguistics, which is the next field of anthropology, and that's the study of language and linguistic diversity in time, space, and society. There are also several areas that we are concerned with. The first being historical linguistics. And that studies how language changes on a linear scope and how language came to be on that same timeline. The second, descriptive linguistics, and it studies the structure of language. The third, ethnolinguistics, and it studies how language and cultures are related. For example, the Inuit people, those who live in the Northern Hemisphere, in very cold temperatures where there's a lot of snow, they have over 200 words in their language to describe snow because snow is so much a part of their daily life and so important to them. And also the Dinka people in Africa for whom cattle is very, very important. Cattle, their lives revolve around cattle, particularly the men of their culture, but the culture overall. And then again, in that culture, there are over 200 words to describe cattle talk about cattle because it's so important. The next area is social linguistics, and that concerns the different language in different social modes or contexts. In other words, you don't talk to your parents or very close friends the same way, same way that we don't talk to authority figures or other people or even people that we have intimate relationships in the same way. Depending upon the context and the situation, our language changes. And we'll talk more about that in our section on language, but you might be familiar with the idea of code switching, which deals with that issue. There's cultural anthropology and the reason you're taking this course, but cultural anthropology is a comparative cross-cultural study of contemporary human society and culture. There are many, many facets to cultural anthropology and we'll be exploring them as we move forward in this course. There's some things that cultural anthropology provides for us. We get a firsthand study of how particular groups live. And as we talk about the techniques that anthropologists use, you'll understand that a bit more. We also, in cultural anthropology, look at various cultures and we compare and contrast those behaviors and their practices and customs and beliefs to see if there are some human behavior that is universal. We also seek to understand the relationship between various dimensions of human life. We look at things like marriage and family and kinship we look at things like death rituals. We look at things such as belief systems and all of those to understand how do those things relate and how they affect human life. And then we also work within the context of cultural anthropology to understand cultural change. We do know that we as humans adapt to our environment. The cultures change over time because of exposure to other cultures. Well, all of the things that go into making us as humans in a place where we do change. And then finally, cultural anthropology serves very well to make the public aware of cultural differences. We all have those things that are in, we have in common, but there are also aspects of our behavior, of our awareness of life that are different. And what we do in cultural anthropology is help you to understand and to appreciate those differences and also those things that are similar.